So uh, today we are going to talk with you about uh, the mentoring and uh, what uh, doors would be open to you as a specialist if you decide to take this personal challenge. So how it can advance your personal career. Several words about myself uh, for you to um, understand my competence in mentorship. So I'm a senior project manager with overall 13 years of experience in IT. I'm a hedonist. Before the war in Ukraine, my interests were dogs handling, horseback riding, traveling, delicious food, and great and best sunrises. But now my interests are mostly focused on searching for armor, helmets, thermovisors, and drones to help our armed forces. Uh, I have recently completed online uh, group PM course for 20 interns and considering new group internship open in this autumn. Right now, I'm a mentor of uh, five rather skilled project managers, and I've been mentoring others for uh, six or even more years, and this part of my work is one of my favorites. So that's why um, I hope that, uh, that I can encourage you to, to take this challenge. So I started my career in Sigma Software seven years ago as a middle project manager, and since then I have become one of the most wanted consultants on project management matters in the company with over 2,000 specialists, and I will describe you how. So let's take the journey. If you ask a technical specialist how to reach professional heights, you will most likely hear something like, you should constantly improve your hard and soft skills, get extra points for learning new technologies, working on different projects and using new tools. Some might answer that you need to take more responsibility and become a team leader. And that's true. Those are the ways to become a highly demanded specialist. But constant self-development might be tiring in some points of your lifetime. You might feel that you reach the plateau and your efforts don't bring noticeable results anymore. There is an alternative path visible not to everyone and available only for those who already passed the foot of the mountain and gained required knowledge to mentor others. In my opinion, this road is open to the specialists of at least, I would say, middle level uh, and with several years of practical experience in DevOps area. So it's maybe the second point, right? Not, not on the uh, lowest point of the mountain. Uh, that's way I chose for myself and I will try to show you this hidden trail as well. So some several obvious statements for you to better understand why companies value those who can educate others. First, qualified DevOps specialists don't grow on trees. And um, second, uh, demand for professionals is constantly growing. Third, um, most of the companies operate in conditions of shortage of specialists. DevOps vacancies are one of the most challenging for recruiters to fill in. Well, if your company is number one employer uh, with the highest salaries, with coolest projects and social package good enough for the queen, then you probably can stuff any new vacancy easily. Um, but otherwise, you would face all those problems that I just mentioned. You can easily check it uh, on, um, on any of your hiring resources. I personally checked for two Poland uh, by the keyboard DevOps vacancy and I got over 1000 of uh, results. So added value that you can offer to your employer is to contribute into junior DevOps uh, specialist education. I'm not a gamer, but according to my very very limited understanding of the game dynamics, you get more and more complicated tasks along with your character development and new skills, new skills that he or she masters. So I'll guide you through several levels in this game that I call become recognized mentor and valuable professional. Um, yeah, so let's take this game. Um, and another important statement I want to share with you. Uh, no doubt, DevOps are quite rare. You are the gems. And today we'll talk about becoming a small gem factory instead of being just a gem.
So we have our mission, we have recognized mentor, and so we have the first level, uh, I call it Mufasa. Uh, and in this presentation, I will be referring to some um, well-known mentors in the movies or cartoons. So uh, Mufasa is also a mentor. He, if you remember the Lion King cartoon, he is Simba's father. Uh, and probably some of you have already passed this first level, but I need to start from the very beginning for those who are just uh, who are only considering their um, trying the, the new role, the mentor's role. So on this level, you get your first mentee. Uh, you don't usually choose who to, who to work with because company hires junior specialists and they need him or her to be supervised by someone experienced. Actually, it's also not true because their actual need uh, is a bit different. They want to lower the risks of clients' dissatisfaction uh, and team's dissatisfaction with junior's assignment and get more qualified specialists faster. So that's the reason why they search for supervisors. So if you agree to become a mentor for a young lion, uh, you teach your less experienced colleagues important things, how to survive, how to cooperate, how to use tools and so on. Leaving the comfort zone and taking extra responsibility for another engineer would give you new experience in communication, planning, time management, forecasting, and other important soft skills. There is a quick tip for you uh, if you want to start going this way. Uh, it's easier to start with junior on the project that you know well, either your current project or the previous projects uh, where you know the client constraints, uh, the priorities, the process, uh, the team and so on. And then you could be just more effective. So how you can do that? But the answer is pretty simple, just with your mouse, you should share your desire to get an MT with your project manager, with your HR partner, with someone who might be interested in that. If there is no official mentorship in your company, you can call for supervision to help with knowledge gaps identified during the interview. Um, meaning you can call it not being mentor, but being supervisor. And uh, uh, I believe that any company would want someone skilled to supervise someone less skilled. That's how it works. So anyone can do that, I'm pretty sure. Uh, let me uh, share some typical difficulties that one might, might face um, while taking this road and some recommendations on how to overcome them. So um, your skills as mentor are not sufficient. You might possess required technical knowledge and struggle with explaining anything to your mentee. So I suggest to, to avoid this risk and get as prepared as you can. You can practice on your colleagues first. Try to explain complicated things via analogies, examples. Uh, you can ask them for their feedback if the explanation was clear enough. You can attend uh, special courses for mentor, get mentor uh, who can um, give you some advice on how to mentor others or how to motivate people. There are plenty of books and articles on mentorship that uh, you can familiarize yourself before you uh, volunteer to become a mentor. And uh, I think that that's worth doing. Uh, but when, you, when you've already done uh, something, then you should just believe in yourself uh, and uh, give it a try because you, you will never be 100% um, ready to, to a new challenge. Then uh, second typical difficulty is um, that your mentee might, might move slower than it's expected. Uh, and here the, the best recommendation I could give you is to align everyone's expectations. Now, there is a chance that the company doesn't understand the real state of things 
and there are more knowledge gaps and it takes more time to close them. Uh, in this case, you would uh, help Menti to prepare the roadmap, uh, to set common expectations or to, um, to help to identify his real level, um, to help um, with milestones definition with specific activities that should be done in order to achieve next level and uh, close the known gaps in the knowledge. Uh, and uh, also it's good to involve HRs only uh, early on this um, stage if you get that type of difficulty. There are lots of other difficulties that one might face, but um, uh, let's not focus on all of them. Uh, if uh, you, you're prepared and if your mentee has the roadmap and everyone is happy with what is stated there, uh, then you're well prepared and you can uh, try this journey. So when your junior is ready to perform the tasks of expected complexity, uh, you can say that you're, you unlocked this achievement. You, you unlocked uh, the, you, you have already successfully passed the level called Mufasa. Uh, you've been spotted as the proactive employee who can contribute into junior's growth. That's something that you can highlight during your next performance review. You are not the champ factor yet, but you got some important skills to become it one day. By the way, you can iterate uh, this, this level several times. Uh, as long as uh, you understand that you like it, it makes you happy. Um, this, well, this, this role suits you and uh, it helps you to, um, well, you're satisfied with doing what you do, um, and you should keep on doing. But if you don't really like this new role and you understand that it's not about you, you, uh, you would prefer doing anything technical instead, um, then it's okay to give up on this stage to say that, okay, mentorship is not, um, not my code and I, I don't want to do that anymore. But at least you try it and you can uh, make this grounded decision for yourself. But if, uh, if it's you and you, you feel that you could go further and uh, you could uh, try to, um, to give your character new challenges, then there is a new level, um, level number two. I call it Mr. Miyagi. Uh, if you remember this old movie, Karate, the Karate Kid, and this Mr. Miyagi, he was the Karate Master. So this level is more complicated. Uh, complexity is higher because you take an individual in turn, someone with little or no knowledge and experience, and you teach them everything that they need um, in the nearest future when they become junior specialists. So you in turn with no knowledge and you are the one who, who is about to educate them everything. In the, best, in the best case, you have some internship programs and um, then again, you can just volunteer to become a trainer for an intern. But if, what if your company doesn't have the internship programs? Well, uh, you can advocate to open the first one. Um, if you want to do that, um, the best advice I can give you is to think and speak business because managers like that. Uh, let me give you a very quick overview uh, why companies hire juniors. Uh, despite the fact um, there are some obvious risks and challenges with um, junior specialists, like they have gaps in their knowledge and experience, they uh, have much higher likelihood of mistakes due to this lack of knowledge and experience. And uh, recently, uh, well, the, the new trend is that they uh, leave the companies early. They are not that loyal as um, juniors used to be a, a generation ago. So but there are a bunch of um, advantages of uh, um, benefits that company gets while hiring juniors. 
and they are the most cost effective company gets uh, the highest margin out of selling their time. Uh, they are easier to hire than more mature specialists and uh, they can do the work that uh, is motivating for skilled specialists like routine or easy tasks. And in average, they have the potential to go fast and uh, the companies know that by hiring junior specialists, they will get um, middle specialists uh, within maybe a year or two or something, depending on the skill set and mindset. So um, despite those obvious risks, companies still uh, take them and uh, hire juniors. But what if you tell your company that you can get all these benefits and lower the risks at the same time? Would they be interested? Uh, there is such a way, and it is called an internship. How you can um, lower the risks stated here uh, in the right side of the slide. Mm, so preparing your own training program and practical tasks, uh, you know for sure what they can or can't do after the internship. There are no unknown unknowns for you. You, you know, um, you were the one who created the program, so uh, it definitely meets your uh, expectations on what the uh, junior specialist should know after the internship. Uh, regarding this high likelihood of mistakes, well, um, the likelihood would still be high after the internship. But the behavior patterns in situations that might lead to mistakes or right after the mistakes happened, that is what you can change during the internship. You can explain on how and when to ask for help, how to prioritize, how to decompose tasks. So all these important um, qualities uh, that will help you to um, lower the number of mistakes or will help you to uh, fix them much faster. Then higher turn turnover rate. Uh, employee loyalty depends on so many things, but it's usually two-way street. And when a company demonstrates its loyalty to a newcomer by giving them opportunity to learn and by investing in their education, uh, such juniors then more often want to pay back um, and to stay longer with the company. But surely it's very important to pay them competitive salary right after the internship, otherwise they will lose all that loyalty. So internship, um, that's how you can explain it to your managers, right? That we still can get benefits of juniors, but we can lower the risks of hiring them. Uh, some additional arguments in support of internships. It's a uh, possibility for you to focus on specific uh, um, tools, technologies, environments. They might be very rare or outdated or so brand new that there are actually no specialists on the market yet. But since uh, you, um, you are the one who prepares the program, you, you can um, put any, uh, anything you want there. So um, you, you shouldn't expect to hire someone from the market who has all this knowledge, but you can definitely get this knowledge if you train themselves, if you train them yourself. That's what was the message. Uh, and second important argument is that you can evaluate not only the knowledge, but also the learning rate and soft skills. That's because you work with these people for, with this person for several months and you observe his or her behavior patterns. And uh, so all that important things, you can make grounded decisions um, whether you want to work with him or her later. Um, if your management still have doubts, you may suggest comparing the cost of junior hiring versus opening individual internship. 
uh, these calculations should be done by management. Most likely you don't have the access to all this commercial information, but um, yeah, in average, I would say that um, internship would cost slightly more for the company than just hiring the junior specialist. But uh, from my perspective, that's okay, because we get also more predictability at the end comparing to taking the junior from the market. Meaning we get higher quality for a little more money. Because the sums, they're actually very comparable. Uh, and um, some tips uh, that you might want to consider if you manage to persuade your company to open an individual internship and make you uh, the, the mentor of this um, new trainee, new intern. Uh, some tips for you. Um, so first of all, make sure you have allocated time for training, uh, that your management and your clients, they don't expect you to be full time uh, on commercial projects because you no know, uh, education of uh, trainees it takes significant amount of time and it, it's well based on your program you could evaluate how much time it might take uh, participate in the choice of an, of an intern uh, you will have more tolerance in this case to his or her mistakes because otherwise uh, um, you might give up early if you if you don't feel uh, responsible for uh, taking this person to your internship. Hire for attitude, train for skills. That's the motto that uh, works perfectly for uh, interns and sometimes for junior specialists. We, we understand that they have a lot of gaps in their knowledge, but if we see the attitude, the, their desire to learn, then most likely uh, we will get and great specialist later. Um, have the education plan that's quite obvious. But it's also important that you track progress and deviation and adjust it if you see that um, that you didn't count on something important while preparing this uh, training plan. Um, and uh, a recommendation that I was not given uh, when I started my mentorship career is um, you sh must drop a suitcase without a handle. Uh, if your intern is underperformer and you understood that quite early, you shouldn't give him or her plenty of chances. If you gave the last chance and you, your trainee didn't use it, just stop investing in her education. It's better to cancel this internship and start another one in one month. It will be difficult to explain, but it's what you must do because surely it will be painful to say goodbye in the middle of internship, but it will be even more painful at the end since you will invest even more money and time. So just don't travel with a suitcase without a handle. It's a bit to throw it away, but it's no good. Just don't build that. And last obvious uh, recommendation to analyze your own mistakes, collect, collect lessons learned and uh, update the program. So what would you get if you decide to take this challenge? First of all, uh, you would get the um, negotiation experience in a complex matter. Because if you manage to persuade your management to open you in churchship, you are cool, right? You you did a great job. That's um, your personal win. You should celebrate. Um, then you also get the experience of uh, planning and reporting for another person. And if you you are considering a team leader's career or um, just taking more responsibility for the team then um, that's a good start as well to get this experience on planning and reporting for someone else. Um, then you also uh, organize your own knowledge in your own field. 
because when you prepare the program, uh, you have to summarize everything. You have to make it clear the connections. So you should consider interdependencies between the topics. Uh, and if you understand that you have, um, that you don't uh, know why it is so or um, how you can do that, then you train yourself as well because you, you need to close this gap before you can educate someone else. Uh, so uh, while preparing educational programs for others, you also uh, get your own knowledge well structured. You get a new line in your CV, which makes you more valuable for uh, the majority of the companies uh, in the market. And also you have great hope for someone uh, who you taught for several months who has all his or her knowledge thanks to you. Um, and um, yeah, th this connection, this chemistry between you two can be so strong. And I actually, I still have, um, I'm still in the contact with um, my first mentees who, who are well, grown up managers in other companies. Uh, they have good careers, but we are still in touch because they're, they're grateful for what they got from me. So um, I think that, I, I hope that this challenge um, sounds interesting to you. And uh, if you manage to, to, to get an intern uh, to train him or her so that she becomes a uh, junior DevOps engineer who can work uh, on expected tasks starting day one, right after the, the internship is over, uh, then you did a great job. Uh, you can, again, replay this level if you like it. You can have several interns one by one. Um, you will understand the difference in perception of your methodology by different trainees. You can adjust the program and learn your mistakes. And actually, now you can create your own gemstones, but it's not a factory yet, it's manufacturing. Uh, still, it's very cool achievement. And um, level three, Master Splinter. Uh, that's, if you know this character, it's a mutant rat. He's the martial arts instructor to the totals. And this level is more complicated because this time you need to train several interns at the same time. <clears throat> so why are group internships efficient? Uh, when you educate several trainees one by one using the same program, you repeat some activities each time. You explain the same topics, you answer similar questions, you give similar feedbacks. Before we said that individual internship might cost more for the company, but it's okay since we get more predictability and at the end comparing to taking the junior specialist from the street. Uh, high quality for more money. But if we scale, what if we divide the efforts on program preparation between several participants? If we take, let's say, four interns, like four totals, and work with them at the same time, what would we get? Um, so we will get time seven on specific activities. On some activities, you can't save money and time. It's crucial to check every practical task and give individual feedback. It's uh, crucial to um, write a complex report on performance, progress, recommendation for your future colleagues. Um, so that's not what you can save on. And I um, marked these activities with red dot. So that's um, not, um, it would take you the same amount of time if you had the internal. Uh, the individual internships. 
um, you you can try to replace it with a benchmark task and peer review, but you will dramatically lose some quality and results predictability. So I, I don't recommend that type of optimizations. With green, I marked the activities like that. Um, you take fixed amount of time, regardless how many internship participants you have. So you uh, spread these costs across all the trainees, which is super efficient. Yellow color, um, like this communication, topic explanation, final exam, uh, it, um, it is used to show activities that are in between. So trainer needs more time to answer questions of a group than of one particular trainee, but it uh, takes trainer less time than it would take to answer the questions if they were individual interns, not a group. Here, some optimizations are possible, like you uh, can set aside specific slots within the day to answer the questions. You present new materials to all of them at the same time. You explain the common mistakes to all of them. So you can do some optimizations while working with a group. Some tips uh, if you decided to take the group internship. So um, you recommend you to cultivate support instead of competition. Don't compare them to each other. Note personal growth and think of good project for each of them. Encourage the group to cooperate. Praise them for help. Um, give group tasks and tasks for pairs. Ask to share the best homeworks um, and interesting findings. Uh, encourage them to answer each other's questions in the Slack or whatever messenger you use. Um, be a challenge and the plan that's obvious. Uh, think of further repeatability. Like if you record the video on some topics, then for the next group, if you decide to take one, you will uh, you will not need to repeat the same materials. You can just ask them to view the to, to uh, watch the video. Um, so I already suggested that you allocate some slots for questions. Don't try to answer all their questions immediately. If they're blocked, they will try to research more and to ask their colleagues. So it's also a good thing for them to do. And it's very, very important to give personalized feedback and check if it's not repeated because the ability to hear the feedback and process it is one of the most important skills for, for trainees. Um, and this achievement is also unlocked. You get the fame, cool experience, grateful colleagues who have become juniors thanks to you. Uh, if you want to become team lead or lead of expertise in your company, that's a great start. You will have the support group and your personal cheerleaders. Now you have become a gem factory and your company knows that. They still can hire juniors if they want from the market, but now they have alternatives. They can also invest several months of your time and get expected numbers of uh, junior DevOps engineers within a predictable amount of time. You gave them possibility to choose how cool you are. So now your mission to become recognized mentor and valuable professional is accomplished. Congratulations. Um, I also wanted to share my experience on um, uh, last online internship I did in Sigma Software. It was for the group of 20 trainees it was part-time involvement, no scholarship, but uh, we are running out of time. And frankly, frankly speaking, I don't think that most of you are interested in such internships right now. But if you are, um, you still have some questions and you would like to get recommendations on uh, organizing an internship like that, online internship with a lot of uh, trainees. Um, yeah. So, you are welcome to contact me on LinkedIn. Here is um, the QR code that you can scan to, to see my profile. Just pin me there, tell me that you are interested and uh, I will be happy to give you free of charge consultancy on how to organize group internship for DevOps engineers. So um, yeah, probably last slide um, for today. 
and that would be words of gratitude. Thank you all guys for listening to my speech. I hope it was useful. Um, we, I also wanted to thank you on behalf of Ukrainians. We get a lot of support from Poland and other European Union countries these days. And one of the bright example, our moderator of this conference for Russian worship t-shirt yesterday, and I personally appreciate it very much. Uh, thank you for your attitude to our women and children who had run away for the humanitarian aid that you provide for the protests that motivate your politicians to stand for Ukraine as well. So every help matters. Just in case we wanted to support Ukraine and just didn't know how to start with, what to start with. Um, I prepared a starting kit for you. Um, that's something that anyone can do. Just repost the news about Ukraine, spread the truth. You can help refugees in your city by just, I don't know, giving some clothes, food, whatever. Uh, or you can donate to trusted funds like um, this one that, uh, uh, is um, QR coded. Uh, it's a comeback life fund, which is the one you can trust for sure. Um, thank you very much again. And uh, let's go back to studio and I'll try to answer your questions if there are any.